Hi everyone, this is Skylar here with my very first video on this channel. Today I want to talk about something that's been on my mind recently as a language learner. Some people might wonder how someone can learn so many languages, especially ones that are similar. One aspect of languages that I like to look at is how they compare and how they differ in terms of their evolution and development. A great example is how to express the idea of being, or the so-called copula verbs in Romance languages. A copula verb is just one that relates one thing to another, as in, I am a student. The verb am is relating I to student. So just to take a brief moment to explain, Romance languages are the group of languages that developed out of Latin. As the Roman Empire expanded and the language spread all throughout Europe, the language that people typically study when they take a Latin course is what's known as Classical Latin, which is the language of the ancient Roman writers, poets, and playwrights, and all the educated people that, you know, spoke that language back then when it was thriving. However, the language that normal average people spoke is called Vulgar Latin, and it's the dialects of this language that become the languages we know today in Europe and ultimately around the world, such as Spanish, French, Italian, Portuguese, and Romanian, among many others. Expressing the idea of being is rather simple in English. We just say I am, you are, we are, etc., no matter what the situation is. But in Romance languages, the actual verb that you use depends on the language that you're speaking. For this video, we will only look at the five of the biggest Romance languages, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, French, and Romanian, and we will only be looking at the present tense indicative. As such, this only shows a few of the many ways that Romance languages developed. So here we have a map of Europe with respect to the Romance languages, and there's a key at the bottom showing what languages are spoken where. Let's start right at the heart of the former Roman Empire, appropriately Rome in what is modern-day Italy. Probably the most important Latin verb that these verbs came from is esse sum, which is the basic verb to be. I haven't formally studied Latin, so my pronunciation won't be great, but uh, here, are the, here are the forms. We have ego sum, tu es, is est, nos sumus, vos estis, and esunt. Uh, like I said, I probably messed all that up. But, uh... As I mentioned earlier, Vogel Latin came from Classical Latin, which greatly simplified the very intricate and rule-driven Classical Latin, making it easier for average people to communicate. This resulted in the Vulgar Latin essere, which in turn became the Italian verb essere, which as you can see just by looking, it didn't change very much. And it conjugates as Io sono, tu sei, lui è, noi siamo, voi siete, and loro sono. Surprisingly, the verb forms don't look very similar to Latins, but the connection is still very much visible. The second most important classical Latin verb is stare sto. In Latin, this verb meant more like to stand rather than to be, and the conjugation is ego sto, tu stas, i stat, no stamus, vos statis, and ye stant. In Italian, the verb stare orthographically looks very much the same, reflecting the relatively short geographical distance vulgar Latin had to travel to become Italian, so to speak. Relatively speaking, the farther a language travels, the more it changes as it gets farther away from the origin that it came from, and as it encounters other people who speak different languages and thus becomes influenced and vice versa. So in Italian, we have the two verbs essere and stare, and they both mean to be, but they aren't interchangeable. Essere is a verb you'll use in most cases, such as sono italiano, I am Italian, or non siamo alla scuola, we are not at school. Stare actually means a little closer to stay or remain, but it's used in specific expressions, such as asking how someone is, like come stai, sto bene, etc. So it's clearly the much less important verb when you're learning Italian and want to express a state of being. As we move over to the west to the Iberian Peninsula, we find the homeland of Spanish, the most widely spoken Romance language in the world, and Portuguese, its close cousin. While these two languages sound very different, if we look at them written, we can really see how similar they are. The interesting thing about these two languages is how their copula verbs were not influenced by just the two Latin verbs we already discussed, but by a third verb, sedere, sedeo, which in Latin meant to sit. Both essere and sedere together influence the verb seer, which means to be in both Old Spanish and Old Portuguese, and we can see how this verb diverged out to become ser in the two languages. We can see the verb forms in Spanish, yo soy, tu eres, el es, nosotros somos, vosotros sois, ellos son. And Portuguese, yo soy, tu, tu es, Ele e nos somos vos sois ele son. In the present tense, aren't too different from the ones in Italian, 
but we can see in the infinitive the influence from sedere. Sedere also influences these verbs in other tenses and moods, such as the present subjunctive, which is different than in other Romance languages, which maintain most of the influence from essere. Now, now let's look back to the to stare and see how that how that changed and came over to Spain and Portugal. As we can see, it became the same verb in both languages, estar, with, again, very similar forms. In Spanish, yo estoy, tu estás, el estar, nosotros estamos, vosotros estáis, ellos están. Uh, and in Portuguese, we have yo esto, tu estás, el está, nos estamos, vos estáis, el estão. Unlike in Italian, both of these verbs mean to be and are both equally important. Ser is typically used for physical characteristics, inherent qualities, origins, descriptions, and other generally unchangeable things, as they like to say. Estar is used for states of being like emotions, location, and other generally temporary things. The best way to think of it in English is to remember that essere and ser are related to the word essence, while stare and estar are related to the word state, as in state of being. Now we turn to the north as we head to France, where things start to get very interesting. We start with the base verbs esse and stare, as always, and these develop separately in Old French, much like they did in Spanish and Portuguese, as two separate verbs, uh, estre and ester, respectively. Uh, and as we look at the conjugations, I'm not going to attempt to uh, pronounce these because I don't know much about Old French and how is it's different from Modern French, but we can see how similar they are to stare and a star. You may also notice that in French, the infinitives sounded and looked quite similar to each other. As French evolved into Middle French, these two verbs combined into one verb, estre, with these conjugations here. Again, I'm not going to pronounce them because I don't know how they should be pronounced. As French pronunciation changed, while orthography didn't very much, we see a lot of consonant combinations that became difficult for the French to say, like the st and est, and they softened them to et to make them easier and smoother to say. In modern French, a circumflex accent, which is the little carrot over a vowel, is an indication that um, a letter, in most cases s, used to follow the vowel. As such, we see this verb estre evolve into the modern etre, with more or less the same conjugations as in Middle French, with just some minor spelling changes. So we have je suis, uh, tu es, il est, nous sommes, vous êtes, and ils sont. And uh, you can even see in the third person singular, which is spelled E-S-T, that S is not pronounced, even though it was kept in the writing for whatever reason. I don't know that offhand. Uh, we can also see again in the second person plural, vous êtes, the circumflex over the E, because in Middle French it used to have that S. And the third person plural, it's important to you know, point out that in ils sont, you really want to make sure that S sound is very pronounced. Otherwise, if you get that, that Z sound, which often happens in between S's, if you say ils sont, that's a completely different verb. That's just the way French works. <laughs> but anyway, naturally, as a combination of these two Latin verbs, être is used for all states of being, with a second verb disappearing entirely. Well, not really disappearing, but we don't see a separate verb like we do in the other three that we've talked about so far. They've just become one in the same. For the last part of this video, I'm going to briefly talk about Romanian, which I don't know too much about, but I found something very interesting while doing research in these verbs. I thought it would also be interesting to take a look at the forgotten Romance language. Due to its geographical isolation excuse me, from most of the other Romance languages, being surrounded by mostly Slavic languages, Romanian is often seen as a black sheep. But despite this, it is often said that Romanian retains a lot of features from Latin that most other Romance languages lost. As usual, we'll start with essere, and I just want to look at the conjugations for the final verb in Romanian first. Again, I haven't studied very much, uh, I haven't studied Romanian very much, so my pronunciation will probably be bad, but the conjugation is Yo sunt tu esti el este Noi suntem, voi suntetsi, and e sunt. These forms are pretty much what we might expect, so you might ask, you know, what's the infinitive? You know, like essere, etre, ser, probably something like esse or something like we find in Italian and French, but it's fi. Well, um, you might ask, where does that come from? And as it turns out, there's actually yet another Latin verb that comes into play here, 
fiere fio, a verb which means to become. In Romanian, this verb influences the infinitive, as we can see, and just like sedere in Spanish and Portuguese, it influences other forms that we're not that I'm not showing here, like the subjunctive present. And it's I'd also think it's worth noting too that um, the first person singular and the third person plural, the actual verbs themselves are the, uh, when they're conjugated are the same, just like in Italian, sono and sono in Italian and sunt and soon in Romanian and I think this this just my guess it sort of reflects how it it kind of retained a lot of things from Latin that other languages lost and Italian has this distinction because it it came from where Latin originally came from in the Roman Empire right right in the heart of Italy I just thought that was worth mentioning so that's my look into some copular verbs of the Romance languages. It, it's interesting to see how several different verbs can be condensed into just one or two, mostly due to sounding similar, being used similar, similarly, or just doing so to make life easier for people to speak and communicate with each other. There are dozens of other Romance languages I didn't discuss here, like Catalan, Occitan, Sicilian, Sardinian, Romance, and many others, simply because I just don't know enough about them, and including them would make this video extra long, even if I only covered the present tense forms. I could maybe do another video talking about the other tenses and conjugations and seeing differences and similarities that we find there, but until then, I hope this was informative and you learned something new, and thanks for watching.